Hello there, Floss Tube. I'm Amanda, um, and this is my channel, uh, Sycamore Stitches, a channel about um, predominantly cross stitch. Um, it's been probably almost three weeks since I did a video, and I feel like it's been forever. So much has been going on. Um, in fact, I'm thinking that maybe after the new year, I might even try doing this weekly because otherwise I just feel like I might just ramble for a long time. Um, so, uh, I've been trying to do this video since like last Wednesday. Um, I wanted to do it on the first, it's now the sixth, but, um, winter, winter has just got me feeling heavy and unmotivated and so um, I don't really feel like doing this now but I'm just gonna push through because I know that that's what I need to do so that it doesn't hang over my head anymore um, ooh. also though I think that some of the some of my hesitation comes from the fact that um, well I want to thank everyone for watching I have only done like two this is uh, floss tube number three so I've only done two videos before and I really didn't anticipate that like anybody would want to watch them so I have been like pleasantly surprised that um, it seems that lots of people are watching them and I think then my perfectionist type like thing is kicking in and now I feel more hesitant I guess to just jump in here and get started because um, people are actually watching and that makes me feel nervous. Um, so I'm just gonna pretend that no one's watching again and maybe that will help me <laughs> to just do it and not worry. Um, one cool thing that happened since we last talked was that I was able to go to a little like stitch in at a local um, cross stitch shop. It's, I mean, it's local, but it was about 45 minutes to an hour away. And I met some stitchy friends in real life that I had met online, so that was kind of fun. And it uh, sounds like something I'll be able to be doing uh, occasionally. Um, so that's exciting. That was the first time I had ever met up with people really for the express purpose of stitching. I had done, uh, years ago when I was trying to get into knitting, I had done a little bit of some knitting groups at some local stores um, but that was that was many years ago um, okay so one good thing about doing these videos is that um, it was really helping me at least last week in getting to the stitchy goals that I said because I I'm not usually like a goal oriented stitcher but I said there were a couple pieces I wanted to finish by the end of November and because I felt like I was gonna kind of have to be accountable to that on the video I I did finish them um, by the end of November uh, and then I didn't tape something to show you but <laughs> Let me show you those. So firstly, this one actually I finished before Thanksgiving. This one, um, well it doesn't have a name. I call it Live Gently, um, but it's from Emma Congdon's Cross Stitch for the Earth book and none of the pieces in there have names, but they all, most of them have words in them. So I assume that's probably their name. And this one says Live Gently Upon This Earth. And it's almost a full coverage piece um, the pieces that are white there are not stitched, but um, I think it turned out really well. And for only having a few colors in it, it really looks colorful, which I I really like color. So um, I do not know exactly how I'm going to finish this. I think I'm going to probably put it in a frame. It measures seven by nine, so it would fit in an eight by ten, but then you're gonna see the white on the edge, and I just didn't know if I wanted that, but I don't know. Maybe by next time we talk, I will have bought some sort of frame to try to decide that. The other one that I finished, I kind of had to push myself a little bit. I finished on the very last day of November, and and I, the main reason I had to push was because it is very backstitch heavy at the end and I have to push to do backstitch. So this is 
I think called Mushroom Botanica or something. It's an Alyssa Ocneus piece. She's the designer and it has lots and lots of colors. I'm going to actually insert a picture right here of what it looked like when I finished the cross stitch versus the finished back stitch. It's just amazing the difference that the back stitch makes. It has so I'll insert that right here. But it has it's all just black and it was like single strand stitching, double strand stitching to make it really pop. And then you can see a bunch of little French knots, which I really don't like French knots, but they're cute on this. So I will I would definitely be framing this one because I have a couple, I showed these on the last one, a couple other ones that I have done that are hers. You can see they're in the same style and I had bought a four pack of these frames. Two of them are already done. The mushroom is the third, and I have a fourth. They haven't started yet. But this one is a little smaller. The mushroom is a little smaller than the other ones, but I still think it'll probably look fine in the frame. Anyhow, so I already have that frame and like my backing board and stuff, so probably I'll get to that hopefully soon. Because I had two finishes, I had two new starts as well because that's kind of how I roll. When I finish one, I get to start a new one. So when I finished Live Gently, I picked another one to start that came from the same book, which is this one, The Cross Stitch for the Earth. Um, I'm not a holiday stitcher, but I tried to of the ones of the things I had kitted up, I was trying to pick things that to me felt wintry. Um, and my definition of what feels wintry seems to be probably very different than other people's. Because the reason I picked this one is simply because it has pine trees in it. So that felt wintry to me. So this is the one I'm doing. It's called, or it says, Between Two Pines is a doorway to a new world. John Muir, which I read recently that John Muir is a bit of a problematic figure, which I guess is not surprising given the time period that he lived in, but I don't know. Um, he's got some amazing quotes. <laughs> so I'll just acknowledge that and say that I'm, I'm going to stitch this anyhow. Um, anyhow, one of the things that I think is really cool about this piece is that the fabric is the dark green. And so the fabric itself is making a lot of the design, which I, I like that kind of negative space kind of thing that's going on there, which honestly that other pattern I just finished the live gently kind of used that negative space as part of the pattern as well. So anyhow, I just started it and this is going to be one that's not going to look like much until like it kind of all comes together. Cause it's a little like confetti like, and with all the negative space, but, um, I am almost done actually with this first color, all the middle and this side, and I just need to kind of do the same thing on this side of this color. I guess I just kind of, it's such a small piece, I figured I'd just kind of go one color at a time. Um, so you can see some of the words are starting to form and you can see like the tops of some little trees there and some trunks of other trees. So yeah, it, I don't think it's gonna look like much until I get a little more in it, but um, I haven't stitched on Ada in a while, and this is a 14 count Ada in probably, I don't know, I think it's called like forest green or something. I don't really, I have it written down somewhere. Um, but uh, yeah. Oh, I know I'm not at haul yet, but I, I do want to share that. So I have, I have an 11 by 11, um, Q-Snap, it's not actually Q-Snap, it's like the off brand, but I kind of like it better. Um, and then I had an eight by eight one and I was never using the eight by eight one, it was too small. So I bought another 11 by 11 and combined them. So now this is an eight by 11 and I have, um, my other new start is in the other eight by 11. So now I'm super excited because I wasn't, I, I've made use of the, the thing I already had by just adding something to it and now I have more to use, so that's cool. So, here is my 
other new start. Let me find a picture of it. This comes from Awesome Pattern Studio on Etsy. This is another one, obviously. This one's a little more winter themed. I don't have to explain this one. It is a little gondola ski lift and it's really cute. The only thing so far I think I'm gonna hate about this is that all of the white and it is actually stitched white. Oh, wait on white. I don't even know. I don't even know. That's not, I hate doing that. And I decided to do this just on some 14 count Ada I had. So you can see I have, these are the little windows on the gondola and some of the, there's also some really pale yellow. There you can see it. That's done in there. That is a little harder to see. Um, this is really, really stiff, Ada. It's like just, um, you know, some cheap six pack of white Ada that I had bought on Amazon a long time ago. And I was just like, I should use it on a couple projects. Um, so it's super stiff. So at first I just, I couldn't, I couldn't even get it in the hoop. I tried to put it in. I, the Q snap's fine, but like, so I tried it. I decided I would try to stitch in hand for a little bit since it was so stiff. Well, I hated it. Um, I think I did all of the blue and like half of this like darker yellow uh, stitching in hand. Not only did I hate just doing it, but like I didn't like how my stitches were looking. I felt like they weren't looking consistent. Maybe it's just because I wasn't used to that, you know, technique. But then I stuck it in this Q snap and I was like, mm, I ain't doing that. So just a little bit started on that, but I think it already said I'm like, how many percentage on my pattern keeper? So it must not be, it's not going to be, I guess, a very big pattern. Let's see. Where's my pattern keeper? Hmm. Oh, three, three percent. So, I mean, I guess that's not very much, but compared to like my other patterns I've been using on pattern keeper, it seemed to, uh, go pretty quickly because it's much smaller than those ones. Okay, so those are my new starts. Um, I guess I'll just do the rest of my whips while we're at it. So, okay, we'll start with my one that I'm struggling with first. Uh, I think I, I've told you in my last two videos that I'm struggling with this little leaf skeletons piece. I'm going one over one on 28 count, which I kind of is bothering me a little bit. Also, the pattern itself won't go into Pattern Keeper or print in a reasonable way. So I'm like reading it off a PDF and like marking it on my computer. I don't know. It's just not fun for me right now. Um, but I got some done on it and I think I'm really just going to now put it away for a little bit um, and maybe... Um, Maybe I'll feel it eh, more later. So, but I did finish this brown leaf. I had a couple of these rows to do. And I started the bright green. This is just like a little stem that was at the top. And then there's another bright green leaf that's like real big down here. And it's kind of in between the lines. There you go. But you can see, it's starting to outline it. I love how it looks. I just don't enjoy stitching it. And I find that... I tried something different instead of rolling the die, leaving it on my little like, sorry, I guess I should explain. Um, my rotation involves six pieces. I roll a die, whatever number comes up, that's what I stitch on for the next hour or to two, um, whatever section I was doing. So I took this off that rotation and just, I rolled a die to see like what day of the week I would work on it, thinking maybe that would help. <sighs> I'm still putting it off. I still don't want to do it. So I'm going to put it away for a little bit. And um, I, I'll i show you what I replaced it with, which was another um, piece that I had gotten tired of and needed to put away. And now I'm excited about it again. So um, I switched it for another piece trouble piece and then maybe this will cease to be a trouble piece in the future this is this is what I'm hoping for so I'll show you what I pulled out to do um, to replace it with uh, I think I said before that at the beginning of the year I started like 
four different stitch alongs. Two of them I finished because they were kind of short. Like they only lasted a few months. And then two of them were year year long black work stitch alongs and I did not finish them because they were year long and I think that was just too much for me. So this is the Peppermint Purple 2021 black work stitch along, which um, lots of people seem to do, so maybe you're familiar with it. I don't have like a picture picture of it, but this is kind of, this is the layout color thing of what it looks like. And I was at week like 20 and had put it away. Now I think I'm up to, I don't know, I'm closer to 30, I think, of the 52. So one of the things that held me up when I put this away was that I had been stitching portions of the black outline boxes as I went and I didn't want to do that. So how I got myself started again on this is that I gave myself permission to to stitch when you know when it was only partially done because I'm like running stitch I would do like a running stitch of it and then I would go back around it. So some of them are like partially done and some of them aren't like this one aren't done at all, but I have enough there that I know where things go and I can fill in the black later. And so I gave myself permission to just go ahead and do the boxes, even if the black outline wasn't there. And that has got me going again because I actually really do enjoy these little patterns. They don't take me very long at all. The small boxes will take about half an hour, the large boxes an hour. And I don't know, um, black work seems I like patterns. My brain likes patterns. For many of these patterns, I only have to look at it for the first little bit and then I just go. Um, so I kind of really do, I mean, some of them, I guess, don't fit as well in my brain or they're not as repetitive and then I have to follow the pattern the whole time. But um, I really enjoy it. And I've done like, I don't know, a bunch of it <laughs> since, I re since I picked it back up. I think two of the okay hi I'm not sure exactly where I was my husband walked in and um, I had to stop the video and so I think I was just um, finishing up talking about the peppermint purple sow that I had put away earlier this year and now I've gotten it back out and I'm enjoying it and for some reason I feel like I need to justify like putting away the other one that I don't like don't ask me why it's just me um and so that feels very justified that I am trading it for something else that I had put away before okay what else do we have going on here oh okay so this isn't exactly a finish because it's not done yet, but it was my goal on this um, bird in the garden was to finish the bird by the end of November. Here's the picture. So as you can see, the bird is the majority of it, and there's also five flowers, one large and four small. So I still need to do the flowers. But ah, I did finish the bird. Let me take this off. Um, so, and as you can see, there's like little bits of flowers that I have started just because I still had like that color on my needle and so I had done that. Um, and I know this feather is hard to see because it's ecru on white. I mean, if I did this again, the fabric would be all different. A, it probably wouldn't be white and B, it wouldn't be this really, really crappy fabric that I got at Joann's that was just labeled linen and it was my first experience with linen so I thought oh my gosh linen's horrible this is just crap it's not it's not linen's fault you can prep I don't know if you can see it's so loose you can see how the stitches pull along the edges the fabric it's just ugh. I just don't like how my stitches look on this and I don't think it's me because I don't have that problem on my other projects but regardless, if you don't look close closely, it looks pretty, and I like the colors, and I like my bird. So I don't know if I'll be able to finish this by the end of December, especially because I don't think I've picked it up in this whole last week after I finished the bird. 
maybe I'll make it my goal to have like the large flower done at the very least. I think that sounds like a good goal. Okay. Is that all of them? There's one more. One more. No, two more. <laughs> okay, this next one is also an Alyssa Acneus. It is, I don't know what it's called. I call it bear. Bear in the woods. It is a huge piece of this watercolor thing. It's like, the pattern is like 16 pages. I'm on the first page, which is basically right here. And I would love to be done with the first page by the end of the year. And I think I probably can be, especially because like also because of the watercolor, not a, some of the colors are full cross stitch. So a lot, there's a lot of half, half cross stitch as well. So this is where I am at. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get it where you can actually see and see me. How about this? Oh, that's better. Okay, so you can see this is the tree and some of the branches and then like the sky color. I did a lot of this um, orange and stuff this this last little bit, which is really making it look come out pretty nicely. The line break of the page is probably about right here and about right here. Obviously I'm going over that because I'm just a cross country stitcher and if I've still got that color on my needle and I can reach it, I'm gonna go. Also then I don't get those weird little lines, you know, where the page breaks are. Um, so yeah, I think I can probably finish this first page and be on to, and then I'll be on this second page. I'm going to work my way across before I go down because just of how my Q-snap is. And I also need to take out these little, my little guide stitches that I stuck in at the beginning so that I knew where to start. Um, but they are, as you can see, like kind of all tangled up in my Q-snap. So they're probably going to hang out there until I move my Q-snap actually. But anyhow, I think this looks good. I will I'll insert a picture right here of where I was last time because it is hard to describe on something like that that doesn't really have, um, you know, like motifs. So, okay, last one. Last one is my Owl Forest Embroidery Northern Land. Here's the picture. Although, like I said, in this picture, it looks like the red and the pink are very distinct colors and they're not so much. They're, it's a lot more subtle. Of course, the blue pops out. I am in this top section um, and my goal was to get through this top. So I guess it's an eighth of the piece it, with the middle motif, which I get, got done. And I've actually was starting on this. I was working on this this morning a little bit. So I'm starting my way down into the second part, but <clears throat> yeah, so I wanted to get this whole down to this line and this whole middle motif done. So I got all that done and I've started moving down a little bit into the next thing, which is, so it's like, this is like a quarter, this is like a half, and then there's going to be a quarter and then everything will repeat over here. So I'm going to work down before I come over here because this over here is exactly this mirrored and if I went to do it right now I would get quite bored with doing the exact same thing but I think by the time I get all the way to the bottom and then come back up maybe it'd be interesting again we'll see I really love the variegated thread I have the owl forest threads you can kind of see but it also, I like doing this piece, but it feels weird because, you know, the variegated thread, you have to do like each X individually. And this is a type of pattern where I would definitely not be doing that because it's very, like there's long lines, right? But it's very different from my, I think, regular style. So I enjoy something a little different. So those are all my whips. Um, 
Next, I guess we will do, oh, there was one other thing I wanted to mention. I didn't have, I was showing my finishes. I don't have a fully finished object, but I thought I would. And I know I showed this before. It's still just taped to the canvas because that was how I wanted to finish it. Here's the thing. Here's why this isn't finished yet. I was trying to figure out who I was going to give this to. I thought, I want to look up the context of this quote. It says, it always seems impossible until it is done. Nelson Mandela. And I was like, cool. I love this quote. I want to see what the context of it was when he said it. Well, Nelson Mandela never said this. Great. Great. I mean, that's what my Googling has told me. It is, a, this quote is attributed to him, but there's no actual evidence of him saying it in a speech somebody said he said it in a speech in like a news article and so like that's why they think he said it but like I think I was even on like one of his own kind of organizations webpage and they were like he didn't say this there's no evidence that he said that so I love the idea that he said it but I guess he didn't or it can't be there's no context or anything I don't know so Again, like I said, I love the idea that Nelson Mandela said this, but I don't want to misquote him, even if it's in a positive way. So I think what I need to do, the part where it says his name is just some backstitching that I did literally the last part of this project, but I think I need to pull it out. And it, the project will look just fine without that part, but I just haven't, I just haven't done it yet because... Well, first off, I was trying to decide what to do with it. And I think that that is my conclusion. I need to take the name off because um, I just, I don't, I don't want to misquote anyone if I know better. Um, even if like, I mean, it's a positive quote. I don't think it's uh, a negative thing to say that someone said, even if they didn't. But anyhow, it will still be a nice piece without the attribution at the bottom. I will need to center it a little differently, obviously. So I need to pull out that backstitch and get it on that canvas. Um, but it also, for some reason, changes the whole tone of the piece for me without that. So I don't know. <laughs> I still like it. Um, I wish I would have looked at that before I did it. But anyhow, I guess it, you know, in the end, whatever. I probably would have still stitched it anyhow. Okay, so that was my conundrum. Okay, haul. I already told you that I got the Q-Snap just from Amazon. I think I got a couple other random things from Amazon that were just like paper bobbins that I really needed. I would love to do some floss drops, but like as my storage, but you know. It's so much easier to just have the little the little box for the bobbins, so I'm sticking with that for now. But I did get these, which I think are kind of fun. It was like a 10 pack of different colors of just floss holders that I just got on Amazon because I wanted to try it out. I wanted to see if I even like using them, and if I do, I'll probably like go on Etsy and get some cute ones that people made. I did, I have started using it in that ski lift one I, I'm using a, one of these for that because it was like just 12 colors so it was a good amount to put on here. I do love that you can kind of see all the colors together when you use it and see how they go. So, I don't know. We'll see. I I think it will depend for me on how many colors are in a project, how what I want to do with the floss in that project. But, I like that little option. Make sure I put things back where they belong so I'm not looking for them later. Um, so, that was like my first little stuff. And then I told you I went to a stitch in at a local needle shop store. So I of course had to get some things there. Um, mainly I wanted to kit up this pattern I had showed before. 
Here Comes the Sun, Shannon Christine Designs. And I just bought some Ada. I think it's 16 count. It doesn't look like 14 count. I don't know why. I took it out of its. Yeah, it's 16 count Ada Wichelt. And the color is called Sea Lily. Kind of matches my shirt, actually. Actually, it looks almost exactly like my shirt. Um, so here's the here's the flosses for the project. So you can see that's gonna look pretty nice. But it's a huge piece of fabric. So now I need to find. I don't like to have huge amounts of stash. So <laughs> now I <clears throat> I'm only going to use about a quarter of this for this project because it's not that big. So now I feel like I need some more projects to kit up with the rest of this cloth because I just don't like to, I don't like to have lots of things laying around that don't have a purpose. I think that's probably different from <laughs> most of the people I see on Floss who have huge stashes of lots of things. Um, but... So far, that's my style. I also got some thread while we were there, just DMC floss. What I needed for, I don't think I needed anything for that, for kidding that up, but I had showed you my Father Frost little freebie from Owl City that I had gotten last time. I'll show you the picture. I can't show you, the thing is just a pattern, but there's what it looks like. And so I needed a couple flosses for that. And I needed a couple flosses for another thing I was kidding up, which I will show you. So I just got some of that. Um, what else am I gonna kit up? It's another thing from the cross stitch for the earth book and I had accidentally ordered that extra piece of Lugana white Lugana and so it will work for this project so I needed the threads I didn't have and this says we don't inherit the earth from our ancestors we borrow it from our children I can't read backwards Native American proverb so that's a really pretty piece so now I have that Kit it up. So I don't like to have things like hanging around that aren't, I don't know. I don't like to start a lot of things. Obviously I showed you that like I, I have a small number of whips and I trade them when I finish, I get a new start. But like what I do is I kit a lot of things up. That's, that's kind of my weakness. <laughs> so everybody's got one, right? But and also like when I get new things, like I said, I have this fabric. Now I want to have a purpose for it because I don't know, I just do. Put all these things back. This cute little bag from the, need uh, the needle workshop, which is called Log House. The Log House, I should say. So, okay, one more thing. And I guess this isn't haul, but whatever. whatever. I guess it still follow follows under it. I have been watching floss tubes for a little while, a couple months before I started making one. And I think I was a little jealous of, you know, the community that people have and thought, oh, there's no way like I can be part of that. Um, but I feel like maybe, you know, maybe just starting, uh, maybe I can be and I'm excited. I... And part of that is, you know, just commenting on other people's things and like talking to them anyhow. It makes me happy. And I won my first contest. Yay! So actually, I'm glad I did put this off because I just got this in the mail today. It's a little card. And this is from Denise at Black Ribbon Stitch Studio, who has a really fun floss tube. So watch it if you're not watching it. And I won a little thing she made which like I said just came this morning so I didn't even I just took it out of the bubble wrap but I didn't open it up oh how fun 
So this is a scissor fob, which I don't own a scissor fob, but now I do, I guess, that she made. And I think she said this big bead right here, she made this bead. I don't know how to make beads, but it's really cool. Really cool looking. Um, anyhow, my scissors that I have are not fancy enough for such a thing. I just have these, you know, these ones that you get on Amazon. Um, but I really like them because they have the little plastic thing. And I have uh, probably like four of these. But I'm going to use this as an excuse to go buy a fancy pair of scissors because... I think that this needs, I think this needs a fancy, a fancier pair of scissors than what I own. Um, so thank you, Denise. I am super excited about this. Um, and now I get to go buy some scissors. So I don't know, maybe by next time I'll have fancy scissors to go with my fancy scissor fob. Um, anyhow, that made me feel good. Um, to, to, I don't know, made me feel like part of a community to like win something. Also, I got a shout out on someone else's channel. So I'll shout right back to Millennial Stitchers because they gave me one. So that is um, fun too. And just, yeah, just, it's only been a month, but I kind of feel like, yeah, I'm part of this, which is super fun for me. Um, and okay, I think that's almost it. I was going to, just like last time, I was gonna show you a couple of the projects that I had done, you know, last year before I, you know, started documenting any of this stuff. So, let me grab this. Oh, I also, you know what? Okay, before I do that. Part of my New Year's resolution, I'm not sure that I'll get to it before then, is going to be to, um, you know, work on my Instagram account. I technically have one. You can find me there at Sycamore Stitches. There's nothing really on it. I mean, okay. <laughs> there are a bunch of random pictures of projects I've done in the past on it with no explanation, no hashtags, no words, just random pictures like it's a photo album. Now, I know that's not what Instagram is, but I told myself I would get back to it to like fill in the rest, but I didn't. But um, I'm going to work on that <laughs> because it sounds like there's a fun community over there too. And I want to be part of that. And I want to find all my people that I'm like following here on YouTube and find them over there. And um, anyhow, that's one of my goals, but probably not till the new year. Um, but along those lines, I did want, I would, I think I'll hashtag this video since I can't, since I'm not currently using my Instagram account. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyhow, um, I wanted to say that for D at D's 20 stitches, I stitched on my bird for your birthday. And so this is the give D, flip D the bird or give D the bird sound. I'll have to look that up because I'm going to hashtag this video. Um, so, so I'm sorry I didn't hashtag you on Instagram, um, but I'm going to hashtag you here on FlossTube. And here's your bird I'm flipping you. Happy birthday. Um, I'm sure Dee doesn't watch this, but maybe you'll find, maybe you'll find it if I hashtag you. Who knows? That would be awesome. I want to be friends. Um, but I think everybody in Flossy wants to be friends with you, Dee, so. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to show you projects that I did last year. I think I'll only do this one more time because I think that's the only, I think I only have a few more projects that are actually here in my house that I haven't given away. But this one is one I did, sorry, let's get this glare off. I don't know how to, I don't usually show things with glass in them. Um, okay. This is a Shannon Christine Designs, I think it's called Rainbow Unicorn. And I made this for my youngest daughter and it usually hangs in her room. It was cute. It was fun to stitch. I had to sub out a couple colors because like they were too pale. I mean, I'm sure they were supposed to be like that, but like I like, I don't like things to be as subtle. 
<laughs> as they were charted. Um, okay, so here's one thing that did stink with this. You probably can't see it on the camera. It's it's very subtle, but um, it was all DMC floss, and I always wash and iron my pieces when I'm done because. I don't know, that's how I was taught to do it. Like, shout out grandma for teaching me that because I know you're probably watching this. Anyhow. Um, so I washed this and the pink bled. And I I don't know if I had a color catcher or stuck one in or I don't I don't remember even what I did because it was last year. But you can see a pinkish tint on the white because of that. And it makes me upset. Um, but like I said, it hangs in my daughter's room. She doesn't care and she, I'm sure doesn't notice, but it's like the white is not as bright as it should be because it's kind of got this pinkishness to it. I pulled it out of the water like quickly, not too much damage was done, but anyhow. Okay. Next we have one that I made for my oldest daughter. Oopsie. How do I get that? Okay, this is just from a dimensions kit. Although I subbed out the fabric, it came with just white Ada. Um, I'm really glad I changed it because I think it looks so much better. Um, this is a 14 count Ada that I bought on Etsy from my vintage needle crafts, I think is what it's called. Um, and the color is cactus. It's, it's like a drab green. Anyhow, I think that it really helps. Um, and it looks a lot better than if it's just on white. And, ah, that's much better, I think. Anyhow, it, 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 it turned out really neat. <clears throat> Sorry, it has a lot of like little half stitches there inside the deer's body with that little seam. And this is up in my oldest daughter's room. So when she got her new room and she was doing it, she was doing it in kind of like a um, Harry Potter theme, but like not necessarily like, anyhow. Um, so the things that she wants were deer and owls, like the, you know, Patronus deer. Anyhow, so that's why she got that one. So maybe it's more like deers, deer and deers. That's not a word. Deer and owl themed. Um, and then this one is one that I actually ordered a kit off of Etsy from Sioka Cross Stitch. And this was super fun to do. Um, they're not on Etsy now. Like, I guess the store's still there, but there's nothing in it. They had such great patterns. Um, they had a lot of patterns. They also had some that were kits. And this was a nice kit. It had like DMC floss and um, I really liked it. And I think they're in Germany, but um, I hope they come back because I would definitely buy some more patterns from them. Um, but right now they're not there. I found them on Facebook and it looked like there were maybe a couple things you could buy, but like not like all of their stuff. So I, I don't know. I don't know what's happening with them and I hope they come back. Um, I think this might have been the first time I finished something in a hoop. No, no, I finished that embroidery piece. I said that before. But I think it was okay. I didn't put anything on the back of it, just threaded it. And then I, it's starting to come up a little bit here. I just put a complementary color like of a pale purple washi tape around the just bamboo frame to kind of color coordinate it. And I think it turned out fine. And this just sits in my room. Okay. I think that's it. Get my tea. Let me look at my thing. Oh, you know what? There's one more thing, but maybe I'll leave that for later. I'm going to. I don't really. It's just a pattern I bought and some plans I have. I don't know. I'm not going to talk about that right now. I'm going to leave that for next time. And, um, because it's part of like this larger project. Anyhow, we'll talk about it next time. And thank you all for hanging out. 
If you're new here, thanks for coming. I should have said this at the beginning. If you're back, thanks for coming back. I hope to see more of all of you. Um, um, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Comment. I'd love to chat. And um, take care of yourselves. I don't know about the rest of you, but this winter, I know it's barely started, but it feels really heavy, particularly heavy for me this year. I mean, some winters are heavier than others. And um, so take care of yourselves. Uh, and I hope you get some time to rest. I feel like I need to hibernate and go to sleep and wake up when it's spring, but obviously I can't do that. And I don't really want to do that, but I have been, um, I guess just taking it a little easier on myself than usual. So I hope you're able to do that too, if you need to. And um, we'll see you again soon. Bye.